Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly update. Today, we do have an update, albeit kind of small. That said, although small, they are fundamentally changing some of the more deeply baked mechanics in this game. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy. As always, if you do, I always appreciate you liking the video. It helps a ton. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. Now, today's update has a variety of different changes, including small changes to group ironmen, integrity changes to how items drop on the ground, some pretty important things, but one thing I think should not go overlooked is at the very beginning of the update, and it's a pretty small change objectively, but one that I think is extremely important. Runelight has been officially added to the OSRS homepage. So why is that a big deal? Well, historically, Jagex has not really wanted to affiliate with any third party clients or really third party group at all. Runelight has always operated as a third party, but today they've officially been added to the home screen, which means to some extent Jagex feels like the relationship between Runelight and the main game is strong enough for them to put it on the homepage, and it means that they are directly endorsing the client. So I think that is definitely a big deal for both the longevity of Runelight, all the plugins that are on Runelight, and I think it's just exciting to see cooperation between the two. Maybe one day Runelight can be absorbed to be the actual official client, but uh, maybe that's wishful thinking. So back in December, Jagex proposed some changes to how death piles work in old school. This would be a fairly significant engine change that would alter the way that the game recognizes items dropped on death. Now this would have a pretty large effect on Ultimate Ironman, but would affect the other game modes as well. So what exactly is this change going to do? Well, currently when you die or when death piles go in the ground, all the item information is saved to the world. Which means if you hop to another world, the server restarts or some other technical difficulty, all those items are going to be wiped. So in short, what this update would do is instead of saving it to the world, they would be able to save death pile information to your player which means every player would have a unique death pile saved to them, which would have a whole host of benefits. For example, think when the next update came out, there were so many people doing the boss that items were getting deleted from the ground because the world save couldn't handle all of it, and it simply had to delete them or the world would crash. This new system would also affect untradeable items on the ground. If you have untradeables on the ground, they will be saved even if you log off and on, and critically the time that they'll stay on the ground for will pause while you're offline, similar to how the gravestones work for regular accounts, but this will apply to Ultimate Ironman. However, like I said, this will have an effect on normal accounts as anything that doesn't go to your gravestone will have this new mechanic applied. Uh, for example, if you drop food and potions on the ground, this will also benefit from a paused despawn timer if you ever log off or the world crashes or anything like that. And beyond that, the benefit to main accounts is having more confidence in busy areas and never having to worry about your items despawning due to masses, disconnections, or anything like that. Now this will be added as an integrity update as it really just resolves a game breaking issue. And this integrity change will hopefully be coming in March. Alright, so next up here is a change to a really interesting item, Verzix Crystal Shard. Now this item previously would allow you to teleport out of a theater of blood, but more importantly, you could allow somebody else to teleport you out for you, which means if you're a hardcore Ironman and you disconnected, someone on your team would be able to port you out. You would have to turn this on, of course, to avoid griefing, but it would add an extra level of safety for hardcore Ironman, at least for disconnects. Now as of today, this functionality has been increased to other areas in the game and Verzix Crystal Shard has just been renamed to an Escape Crystal. So you're able to continue to buy these outside of the Theater of Blood for 75,000 GP, but you can also buy them from Rick in the Wizard's Tower for 75k as well. So the functionality is the same, you can both activate them yourself to instantly teleport away from a dangerous situation, or you can toggle it so that other players can activate their crystal to teleport you out as well. However, the escape crystal is now also going to work in other areas on top of Theater of Blood. It'll also work in Pest Control, the Inferno, the Six Jad Challenge, Chambers of Zarek, and Barbarian Assault. Now this change is more specific for group hardcore Ironmen because Chambers of Zarek, Pest Control, the Inferno, those are not safe deaths for group hardcore Ironmen. So now the functionality has been increased. Now another quality of life change for group Ironmen, I mean like literally quality of life, we have the Ring of Life or any Ring of Life substitute, that being like the Defense Cape, the Max Cape, stuff like that, will now work for group hardcore Ironmen 
in a bunch of different places including the fight caves, the Knights Wave training ground, Mage training arena, the Nightmare Zone, pest control, and a few other boss fights, so now there is a bit of extra safety there as well. Now beyond the safety features, Group Iron Man have also received a few other small changes this week as well. As of today, Group Iron Man players can now teleport directly into their teammates' POH. Now if you have a Group Iron Man on the house teleport spell, there's now going to be a right click option, which will allow you to choose what group house you teleport to, or you can go back to the previous one. Now, this will only work if the owner of the house is on the same world as you, they can't be in build mode, and you have to already have the requirements to access the relevant POH house portal. In addition to that though, all players can enter POHs while the owner isn't home. That said, their house has to be unlocked, you can't have private enabled, and you have to be friends with the other visitors. So it must have been a pretty big engine change there, and I'm sure Group Ironman accounts will definitely appreciate that. And finally, another really big change for Group Ironman is you're now able to actually increase your group storage in the game mode. Now how you do this is by kind of completing some arbitrary tasks. In the group storage interface there's now a new button. They'll open up an interface with a list of different tasks that you can do to expand your group Ironman storage. Uh, so here are the tasks. You have to equip a room plate body, equip a pair of stronghold of security boots, achieve a 99 in a certain type of skill, achieve a 99 in each specific skill, Earn 50, 100, 150, or 200 quest points by leveling up your combat, by leveling up your total level, by completing achievement diaries, and by completing combat achievements. And presumably every task that you complete will slowly expand your group storage, which should eventually happen naturally. A lot of these you don't really have to go to your way to do it. You're just kind of gating it behind general progression. So that is going to be it for today's update. Mostly small things, but also some pretty important integrity changes and fundamental changes to how game mechanics work. So I still think very important. Hope you guys enjoy as always. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Nell, Zero, The Hybrid, Alejandra, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon tier. You guys are amazing as always. And a huge thank you to Kaiten987, Locusties, Mexos, Base Titch, NDM001, and YoYoSub89 for subbing at the Runite tier. Again, thanks a lot. If any of you are looking for another way to support the channel directly, becoming a YouTube member is a great way to do so. You'll get immortalized in all of my future videos and get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.